नमो नमस्ते अखिला यज्ञा तवे स्थित गृहतामला सत्वा मूर्त दृष्टिया हतो अय जगता अरुंतुत पाद भक्त वीशा निर्वृता देवाऊचु नमो नमस्ते अखिल यज्ञतवे स्थित गृहतामल सत्मूर्त दृष्टिया हतो जगता अरुंतुत भक्त वीश निवृत The demigods, Uchu, said, "Namaha, obeisances. Namaha, obeisances. Te unto you, Akhila Yagna Tantave, the enjoyer of all sacrifices. Sitau for the purpose of maintaining. Grihita, assume." अमला प्योर सत्वा गुडनेस मूर्त फॉर्म दृष्टिया फॉर्चुनेटली अत स्लेन अयम दिस जगता टू द वर्ल्ड अरुण टू दॉजिंग टॉर्मेंट तत्पाद टू योर फीट भक्तिया विदिवोशन वयम वि ईशा ओ लॉर्ड निवृत्ता हैविंग अटेन्ड हैपीनेस ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपा ट्रांसलेशन द डेमी गॉड्स एड्रेस द लॉर्ड ऑल ओबिसेंसेस एंड टू यू यू आर द एंजॉयर ऑफ ऑल सैक्रिफाइसेस and you have assumed the form of a boar in pure goodness for the purpose of maintaining the world fortunately for us this demon who was a torment to the world has been slain by you and we too o lord are now at ease in devotion to your lotus feet please repeat the demigod address the lord all obeisances unto you you are the enjoyer of all sacrifices and you have assumed the form of a boar in pure goodness for the purpose of maintaining the world fortunately for us 
this demon who was a torment to the worlds has been slain by you and we too o lord are now at ease in devotion to your lotus feet <clears throat> the material world consists of three modes goodness passion and ignorance but the spiritual world is pure goodness it is said that they said here that the form of the lord is pure goodness which means that it is not material in the material world there is no pure goodness in the bhagavatam the stage of pure goodness is called satvam vishuddham vishuddha means pure in pure goodness there is no contamination by the two inferior qualities namely passion and ignorance the form of the boar therefore in which the lord appeared is nothing of the material world there are many other forms of the lord but none of them belong to the material qualities such forms are non different from vishnu form and vishnu is the enjoyer of all sacrifices the sacrifices which are recommended in the vedas are meant to please the supreme personality of godhead in ignorance only people try to satisfy many other agents but the real purpose of life is to satisfy the supreme lord vishnu all sacrifices are meant to please the supreme lord the living entities who know this perfectly well are called demigods godly or almost god since the living entity is part and parcel of the supreme lord it is duty to serve the lord and please him the demigods are all attached to the personality of godhead and for their pleasure the demon who was a source of trouble to the world was killed purified life is meant to please the lord and all sacrifices performed in purified life are called krishna consciousness this krishna consciousness is developed by devotional service as clearly mentioned here the sense the bhakti vedanta purport so in this chapter we <coughs> read about the fight between demon hiranyaksha and lord bor and we saw that how the demon was killed by the lord and then all the devatas they come to that spot and brahma spoke he was struck by a four four foot of the lord whom yogis seeking freedom from this unreal material bodies meditate upon in seclusion in mystic trance while gazing on his countenance this crest jewel of deity's son had cast off his mortal coil and then brahma continues these two personal assistants of the supreme lord having been cursed have been destined to take birth in demoniac families so these two demons hrinakashipu and nyaksha they were destined to take birth in demoniac families originally in the form of jaya and vijaya after a few such births they will return to their own positions then after brahma spoke the other devatas also addressed the lord all obeisances unto you you are the enjoyer of all sacrifices and you have assumed the form of a boar in pure goodness for the purpose of maintaining the world fortunately for us this demon who was a torment to the worlds has been slain by you and we too o lord are now at ease in devotion to the you are lotus feet so prabhupad in the purport mentions that this material world consists of three modes goodness passion and ignorance we as conditioned souls are under the influence of these modes whereas lord is always in pure goodness completely unaffected by the material qualities we come under the influence of the modes because we want to enjoy be an enjoyer independent of the lord icha dvesha samutthena dvanda mohena bharata when we have the icha and dvesha envy 
then we come under the influence of dwandva and get overpowered by these material qualities so some and substance of what is happening in the material world we all are helplessly acting under the influence of the modes stringent modes of material nature some are predominantly influenced by tamoguna some are predominantly influenced by rajoguna and some are in satvaguna and prabhupada also mentions human life is an opportunity for us to purify of all these contaminations the influence of the modes situate ourselves in shuddha sattva and prepare ourselves to go back to our original home the kingdom of god this is the purpose of human form of life so the living entity when he wants to be the enjoyer all living entities being amsha of the lord are actually prakriti male or female in this material world although male is said to be the enjoyer female prakriti is said to be enjoyed but in this material world all living entities irrespective of what bodies we may be in are actually prakriti meant for the pleasure of the supreme lord when we take the position of purusha enjoyer then our original consciousness which is pure consciousness which is krishna consciousness gets contaminated mamai amsha jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mana shashta indriyani prakriti sthani karshati so prabhupad gives a very nice example to explain that how we lose our consciousness when in contact with the material nature the original krishna consciousness prabhupad also very emphatically says krishna consciousness is not an artificial imposition of the mind it's the original consciousness of the living entity the example is given just like a spark of a fire it already is fire it is part of fire qualitatively same as fire quantitatively maybe much lesser than the original fire but that spark if it falls on dry grass then it can ignite rather than it getting doused getting extinguished it can ignite the dry grass and again become fire so this prabhupad compares to a living entity a spark a part and parcel amsha of the supreme lord predominantly in sattva guna so when we are, when we are in sattva guna it is very easy to transcend the modes although even sattva guna is binding sattva guna brings in element of peace clarity of thought but still unless we are blessed with the mercy of a pure devotee of the lord transcendental knowledge we can be conditioned even in sattva guna we have to cultivate sattva guna but sattva guna is not ultimate thing sattva guna is a stepping stone the springboard where we can enter into vishuddha sattva shuddha sattva so spark fall down on dry grass it can immediately ignite the grass this is a comparison given to sattva guna so the spark is fallen away from the fire but it can be again ignited or other it can again become fire so those who are captured by sattva guna they are intelligent they have got the knowledge just like the brahmanas there could be some brahmanas who are very regulated in their schedule very austere may not be krishna conscious we have different kinds of brahmanas may not be vaishnavas so they are compared to that spark falling on dry grass 
If the spark falls down on ordinary grass, green grass, then it burns for some time, then again it becomes extinguished. This is the living entity under the influence of Rajaguna. When we are under the influence of Rajaguna, then the living entity becomes busy in material activities. Rajaguna means very, very active, but active like a monkey. Just like monkey is very active, but it is very dangerous. You will never see a monkey inactive. So in this material world also we see, predominantly people are under the influence of Rajaguna and Tamaguna. People are very active. People are in one sense working very hard to advance in different fronts to seek more happiness, to seek more pleasure. Lot of effort is being put. Very, very active. They are not lazy. But again, because that original consciousness is lost under the influence of Rajoguna. The whole purpose is mistaken. Today's world advancement is all about how we can gratify our senses more and more in much more gorgeous ways. That's some and substance of material advancement. But if the spark falls down on water, immediately fiery quality is extinguished. That is the influence of Tamoguna. And those who are captured by Tamoguna, they are lazy and sleepy. These are the symptoms. Tamoguna means they are lazy and sleepy. So, Mamaiv Amsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, although we are qualitatively one with the Lord, Sat, Chit and Ananda, but under the influence of these modes, we have lost our original consciousness. And depending on which mode we are predominantly influenced by, to that extent we lose our original consciousness. And when we, from Tamoguna to Rajoguna to Sattvaguna, the whole Vedas, different Karma Kanda portion, it's all about how the living entity can gradually be uplifted. Some sacrifices, some rituals, some austerity, some penances, maybe for material gain. It is slowly to lift the living entity who has fallen deep under the influence of Tamoguna, gradually to Rajaguna, for their own material advantage, Artha, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and eventually Moksha, how the living entity can be brought to Satoguna, and then from Satoguna, if he gets the mercy of a pure devotee of the Lord, he gets transcendental knowledge, he can come to Shuddha Sattva and original pure Krishna Consciousness. So Prabhupada in one place says this material world, just like here it says, consists of three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. Three modes of material nature and the grip on the living entity is very very stringent. Devi, Esha, Gunamai, these Gunas, the, the influence, the grip on the living entity Devi Yesha Gunamai Mama Maya Dhuratteya. Just by knowledge, just by scholarship, we cannot come out of this grip. Sometimes we as devotees also theoretically we know, but helplessly we get influenced and act in a way which later on we regret. Devi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Dhuratya. Prabhupada compares that this material world, this Maya, Maya Devi, which is keeping the living entities entrapped in the material existence, Durga Devi. We all have seen the picture of Durga. She has ten hands. So Prabhupada says these ten hands represent the ten directions north, east, south, west, the four corners. Northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, up and down. These ten directions, Maya is, is keeping an eye on us, keeping a grip on us. 
imagine you are in a prison house this material world is also called a prison house imagine you are in a prison house and you are being watched that you don't come out of the prison house not by one not from one direction there are cctv cameras up down east west all directions moment the person makes some attempt to come out the supervisor or the jail superintendent is alerted so then krishna in the same verse says devi esha guna mai mama maya dhuratteya maam eva ye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite and the only way to come out of this grip of the material nature stringent laws of material nature these modes krishna says maam eva ye prapadyante surrender to me people worship different gods many people who are religious just like in one sense prabhupada was explaining that even ravana was quite religious very pious in that sense he was also very austere hirnakashipu what austerities they did they also had believe in god but they wanted to be enjoyer they wanted to occupy the post of god they wanted to be an enjoyer just like ravana although he was a great worshipper of shiva but he wanted to enjoy sita take the position of lord ramachandra and enjoy sita so <clears throat> maya devi has very stringent laws so proper explains that just like when a person is condemned when is condemned to be executed or may be killed sometimes we have you know people who are given capital punishment they are hanged or various other means so prabhupad says there is only one way where the person can get a reprieve just like even in indian law even the supreme court may give a judgment you may have lower trial courts and then other courts finally the case goes to the supreme court even the supreme courts gives a judgment only one person has the power to overrule that judgment and to transform that punishment into life imprisonment or any other kind of thing and that is the president of the country so prabhupad says just like that krishna has the power to take us out of the influence of the mood ya smaret mundri kaksha sab bhaiya abhayantra suchihi all the impurities all the contaminations abhadras the influence of the modes can all be vanquished when we remember krishna so prabhupad says that the demigods they are godly living entities they are also living entities like us but they have they are called godly they are as good as god they are called demigods because they have realized that they are not the enjoyers the living entities who know this perfectly well are called demigods godly or almost god since the living entity is part and parcel of the supreme lord it is his duty to serve the lord and to please him so on one side conditioned souls they are overpowered by maya completely convinced that how we can squeeze out more and more enjoyment from this material world whereas when we get purified we become godly and naturally our consciousness changes from being an enjoyer to give pleasure to the supreme lord the demigods are all attached to the personality of god and for their pleasure the demons who was a source of trouble to the lord to the world was killed so when we become godly and when we start serving the lord when we desire serving the lord it is not that the lord it's a one way traffic the lord is simply enjoying our service the lord is also reciprocating the service of his devotee by giving pleasure to the devotee 
by giving protection to the devotee. In other words, serving the devotee. And how is the Lord reciprocating to the demigods? The demigods were troubled by the demon. And for, the, for their pleasure, the demon, for whose pleasure? The devatas' pleasure. Devatas are godly living entities. For their pleasure, the Lord killed the demon who was source of trouble to the world. Purified life is meant to please the Lord and all sacrifices performed in purified life are called Krishna Consciousness. One time there were two friends and one of them took an orange in his hand and said, if I squeeze this orange very, very tightly, what will come out? So the person looked at him, what will come out? Juice will come out. He says, which juice will come out? Will it be watermelon juice? He again looked at him. Something has gone wrong with this person. What do you mean? He says, will the grapefruit juice come out? He says, orange juice will come out. Then this person asked, why? Again, you know, he was, it was becoming too much for him. He says, it's because orange, that's what it is inside. So when you squeeze an orange, orange juice will come out. What's the big deal? Why are you asking? So he said, what if, just for sake of discussion, you are in place of orange and someone squeezes you. Squeezes you means offends you, troubles you, gives pain to you. What will come out? So of course, what is inside me? So likewise, <clears throat> this example was saying that how many times when people offend us or give pain to us or trouble us, different people react differently. A lot depends on what's going on inside us. What modes we are influenced by. Different people respond differently. So likewise, when our consciousness is Krishna consciousness, naturally what will come out in terms of our thinking, feeling and willing will be service to the Lord, will be pleasure of the Lord, will be satisfaction of the Lord. And if our consciousness is material consciousness, then we will exercise our free will to choose our own satisfaction, our own pleasure and act in a very, very selfish way. So this organization, this, this society which Prabhupada created, it is all about transformation of consciousness. What's going on inside us? And that is what many times we may not be able to control the circumstances, situations around us, the family members, but we can control very easily in one sense the consciousness, what's going on inside us. And when we transform that, when we purify that consciousness, how does we purify the consciousness, Prabhupada says? This Krishna consciousness is developed by devotional service as clearly mentioned here. When we develop our Krishna consciousness, naturally we will become purified. Naturally we will have desire to serve Krishna, Guru and Krishna. Prabhupada in another place says that when we are under the influence of Maya, these modes of material nature, naturally we will have inclination to serve the dictates of our senses and mind. Serving is the constitutional position of the living entity, dharma. We cannot separate it out. All of us are servants, right from President of the United States to a small beggar in the street. Everyone is serving. 
so when we are under the influence of maya when we are under the stringent grip of the modes of material nature naturally we will exercise our thinking feeling and willing to serve the dictates of our senses and the mind when our consciousness is transformed into krishna consciousness we will naturally it will be a natural outcome that's why prabhupad says it is not an artificial repression it's not an artificial imposition it's a natural consciousness when the consciousness is transformed into krishna consciousness yasmaret pundrika by remembering krishna thinking of krishna chanting krishna's holy name when the consciousness is transformed into krishna consciousness natural outcome would be our thinking feeling and will will exercise our free will to please krishna to serve krishna to remember krishna since the living entity is part and parcel of the supreme lord it is his duty to serve the lord and to please him right now if we see our qualities it's it's opposite we are conditioned souls we are trying to get purified by engaging in devotional service slowly purification hap tapo divyam shudhyet brahma saukhyam tu anantam what will happen by doing divine tapasya by engaging in devotional service shudhyet all the contamination all the abhadras all the dirty consciousness will get cleared off and we'll come to our original pure pristine krishna consciousness which is krishna consciousness and when we are situated in krishna consciousness then 24 hours we have no other desire but to serve the desires of the lord many time impersonalists or mayavadis say that we merge with the lord we become one with the lord actually that oneness is in terms of our desires we have no other desire other than the desires of the lord the individuality is still there but we have no separate desires so in the previous verse brahma is mentioning that these two personal assistants of the supreme lord having been cursed were destined to take birth in demoniac family so each one of us also are born in this material world kalo shudra sambhava different circumstances after a few births they will return to their original positions own positions many people even so called religious people don't believe in life after death even though they may be pious they may be religious even so called religions they proclaim that this life is all in all but from bhagavatam we get an understanding that how the living entity is amsha of the lord and parastasmatu bhavanyo vyakta avyakta sanatana there is a spiritual world our original home and when we get purified our consciousness gets purified become eligible to go back to our original home and blissfully serve krishna unless we cultivate the desire to serve krishna to give pleasure to krishna we are in the material world and when we are trained when our consciousness is purified krishna consciousness is developed then we are eligible to go back to the spiritual world and in spiritual world only one activity is happening and that is everyone is blissfully serving krishna so why maya is kept captive because we don't maya does not want living entities who still have a desire to enjoy go to the spiritual world and disturb the arrangement happening there in the spiritual world krishna is the center of enjoyment everyone is serving the lord and everyone is very convinced that krishna is to be pleased krishna has to be served krishna has to be satisfied ichha dvesha samutthena when that ichha comes that no i want to be served i want to be the enjoyer i want to be the center of attraction then we have this material creation so it gives complete clarity what the material world is what the spiritual world is what's the purpose of life big big erudite scholars sometimes if you ask a common man or a, even a so called intelligent man what you ask what's the purpose of life he will fumble i have asked this question to many many people some will say those who are influenced by goodness is a purpose of life is to be good do good somebody the purpose of life 
is to go back from this world smiling. You come in this world weeping, purpose of life, do act in such a way that the world smiles, world cries and you smile. That's the purpose of life. So, <clears throat> from scriptures we get a clear understanding. And if we analyze ours, a little bit of realization, whatever we have, we can see that how the maya, we all are trying to be enjoyers, then we get slaps. Deviyesha gunamai mama maya dhurutteya prakriti sthani karshati. We can see that with little bit realizations we have. And as and, as and when we become purified, the stringent grip is loosened. And as the grip loosened, we, we start relishing real pleasure, real happiness, real freedom. And finally, when we are completely purified of all these contaminations, we develop our pure consciousness, which is our original consciousness, we go back to the spiritual world. We stop here, Granth Raj, Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki.